On this video we look at the MMDVM Hotspot. These are gaining in popularity now and are coming well down in price. This one's based on the Raspberry Pi Zero um, board and it supports the DMR, D-Star, P25 and System Fusion uh, protocols all at, all at once. Um, now note that label on the underside of this unit, the 500TX and RX offset. We'll need that later on when we set this up. So we're just going to go through a setup of this unit and show you how you uh, set it up and get it working. I just thought I'd break it apart just to show you what you get and I'll pop a link in the description to where you can get this assembled like this. These are, uh, are available for anywhere between £70 upwards on eBay and on other marketplace sites. Now the first thing to do is to go over to the pystar.uk website and put go to the Wi-Fi builder in there put your SSID for the Wi-Fi network you want to connect the unit to and put the password in there as well and what this will do it will create a little configuration file which will write to the memory card when you put the image for the uh, unit on there so download this config file a uh, supplicant get rid of the one after that's just because I've already got one in my downloads um, so uh, WPA supplicant .conf is the file. Go down and find the image for your unit. On this one, it's that one there, the Pystar RP1, and download that file. This file is about 500 meg. Now, the next thing you need to do is to go and get the etcher file. Once you've extracted that download, you need to put your memory card in after you've formatted it. Select your image file and then burn the image file using Etcher. There's a, I'll put the link for this Etcher program which will write the image file. Then the little file that you created, the WPA file for your Wi-Fi, you need to copy that and paste that onto your, um, your memory card with the image on. And when you pop this image into the, uh, the unit and you power it up, it will take that Wi-Fi information and connect to your Wi-Fi, assuming you've got all the uh, settings correct in it. Now this this has already been configured on this unit here and I just thought I'd show you the, the current consumption there. It's about 180 milliamps on standby. Okay, so this has actually already been configured and it's actually working now. But if you go into the configuration, you just need to put pi dash star in for the username and raspberry for the password. That's default. And when you pop into the unit there, oh yeah, I, mean, I forgot to mention that to get on it, you need to just type in pi dash star in the top there. You need to um, set up the, the the system as I've got it here. For D, I'm just going to show you DMR here, but you can you could switch all the others on. Uh, but just pause the screen. Uh, you need to set OLED for the screen so you can see it if you've got the screen. That's important. Uh, you need to put your um, your node name in there, your call sign in there, your DMR ID, that's important, you need to put your, your ID in there, your receive frequency that you're going to use the hotspot on, you can, don't have to bother with your latitude and longitude but I put it in there anyway, uh, and then this is important, the radio modem type, it needs to be that one there for Raspberry Pi hat with the GPIO header. Now when you apply these changes you have to apply them once you've changed it. When you go back in it will have forgotten that so you need to select that again when you go back in for the second time around for the modem. Um, there's some other feature settings in here, not a lot you really need to play with. So you go back in there and set your modem up again. Uh, you can go into the DMR configuration. I'm in the UK, so I've selected the UK server here. But if you're in other countries, you just select the one that's nearest to you. I use DMR color code 1 and set all my channels up on my radios for that. And you can also, once you've got onto the Wi Fi, if you want to change it, you can actually search for another Wi Fi hotspot in here by configure Wi Fi and then scan for networks. It takes roughly about 10 seconds, as it says there. And once it's scanned uh, through your network, it will find all the relevant hotspots that you can hop onto, and then you can just simply reconfigure it there. Pick whichever one you want, and reconfigure it, and jump onto it. I mean, I'm going to use this with my mobile phone, so I'm going to set up a hotspot on my mobile phone, and then use it with that. that that's what I intend to use this for, because I've already got an open uh, a, a Shark RF um, open spot. Um, this particular hotspot belongs to to Mick G0LDB. He's given it me to have a little play around with. So if you go into the admin settings and go into the advanced settings, there's a few things that you can play around with in here. Now remember that sticker with the RX500, TX500. That's the offset. It's basically the inaccuracy of the unit that's measured by the manufacturer. Uh, they're not exactly on spot on frequency. I think that's 500 hertz out. So um, you need to put that offset in there, otherwise you'll get a bit error. Uh, co corruption and error, bit errors on your transmit when you transmit and you'll see that on the dashboard when you go in. I also enabled slot 1 and slot 2 on mine 
uh, which 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 seemed because I, I couldn't seem to get it to receive properly. So I just enabled both slots, which you can do down here. In any of these settings, you in any of those boxes, you have to apply the changes on the one that you've done, and then it will reboot, and then you can carry on and, and go into uh, and change more settings in different boxes. You see there, I changed those two to slot one and slot two, and then applied them, and then reboot reboot does take a long time that's the difference between these cheaper units and the more expensive things like the open spot 2 is the the reboot time you have to wait a little bit but to be honest they're so much cheaper i mean this is 70 pounds versus 200 pounds for the open spot 2. Uh, the other thing you can do once you've done it is do a system update uh, being a linux device that's all built in you don't have to do anything else just click on the update and it will get you the very latest version down uh, we'll have a listen in a second you can see it booting up here I've already got it online this is going through my Wi-Fi and then we'll just have a little listen to somebody on TAC310 which is a very popular uh, um, a node and network talk group okay you know that NES? yeah yeah monitoring 310 hello there sir this is G7LNK in the UK I just wonder if you could give me a quick radio check please ESK. Signal's very good. I'm located uh, here in Northern Illinois. Go ahead. This is G7LNK testing. G7LNK testing. So you can buy these as you can see here on eBay pre-assembled or you can buy the board separately but to be honest you don't really save that much much money in doing that but if you don't want it in this form factor you can obviously buy it separately. I intend to put it into a 3D printed case of some kind uh, and you can also obviously power these in your car off of something like one of these uh, power banks, these USB power banks that's uh, a good way of doing it as well and that way it's never going to run out of that kind of tiny current consumption right i thought I'd just put that up there really really quickly because some of the videos i'd seen on setting these up were 25 30 minutes long and you really don't need that you can get online very very quickly with these if you just whiz through okay if you have been thanks ever so much for watching we're going to wrap this video up i uh, will catch you on the next one 73